Welcome back to Inside the Box. I'm Joanna Lee, and in the second episode of the Behind the Scenes series, we have a special surprise with an internationally renowned hair and makeup artist. He has won numerous awards for live makeup competitions, particularly with the Allied Beauty Association, and has represented Canada at the International Makeup Artist Championships for Messe Düsseldorf's Beauty International. He has worked backstage for several fashion shows and has a few films under his belt, but mainly works in bridal, commercial, and catalog shoots, education and training, and luxury retail. Brands he's worked with are Estee Lauder, MAC, Makeup Forever, Stila, and for the last few years, works exclusively with the House of Chanel as the national studio artist. His time is also split with Bryan College as their makeup instructor. Please give a warm welcome to the founder of Vinny Artistry, Vinny Tang. Welcome, Vinny. It's wonderful to have you here with us today. Hello, hello. Thank you, thank you so much for having me, Joanna. It's my absolute, absolute pleasure and honor, really. Absolutely, and welcome. <laughs> so let's talk about your origin story and the journey and how you got into hair and makeup industry and where you are today. Sure. Um, it was not my first choice career-wise, actually. It was actually like a hobby turned career. Um, like many people, I went to school for finance and accounting like all my friends did. And then I went to a more um, business aspect of it. But when I finished university, I just realized it, I don't know if I would have done it for as a career for a long time. And I was working as a server at, uh, at the time too. And my friend went to school for makeup and she's, she needed a model for her makeup class. So she said, can you be my model? I'm like, oh yeah, sure, of course I went. And I knew, well, I thought I knew what a makeup artist does, which is sell makeup and things like that. But it wasn't until I went to the actual school that I realized like, oh, people do this for an actual living. Like they do sell makeup, but they do bridal and they make noses and they, you know, do training and education. So I just was there to model, but then I, you know, got to take in everything that there was there to offer. And I got talked into taking a part-time class. So I took a part-time class for fun, just to really see what it was like. And then I took a part-time class and I really, really liked it. I loved the confidence it gave myself because I was practicing myself and I love the confidence gave myself, but working with other people, I love the confidence and the beauty aspect that it has that brought out in other people. And so I just found it so, so fascinating that I decided to do like a career change. And then I did, you know, a few more classes part-time and then I decided to make the switch into full-time and I just never looked back. That's amazing. Wow. What a journey. <laughs> It's really, really fast paced. And I just, I love what I do because I get to, I'm a social person. So, I mean, I'm shy, but it's taught me not to be shy. I love meeting people though. I always did love fashion and beauty. I just didn't know how to make a career out of it or that it could be a career. So I just love that. Like I get to meet people. I get to be artistically creative. I feel like the harder I work, the more it gives back to me. Cause I do work for myself. Or, you know, I, I'm self-employed partially. So, you know, it's one of those jobs where I get that job satisfaction every single minute that I'm doing makeup on or with somebody. And when I go home, it's relatively stress-free. Like I go home thinking, I made this person feel this way or like I did this line of perfect. So I go home with a, like a sense of accomplishment. So that's why I really love it. Absolutely. Wow, that's beautiful. If only everyone felt that way about their career. <laughs> I have bad days too. It's just that like, you know, it, it's not the one of those jobs where I come home and I'm stressing about it, right? Like, mm -hmm. yes, I think about a shoot and I stress about, you know, the coordination and the look coming together, but those are not things that like really stress me out. I would say it's part of the challenge and the fun and the growth, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I was wondering, what is your favorite thing about being a hair and makeup artist? Ah, well, it is, well, it's, 
that I get to make a living doing what I love to do. Like, I don't play sports or do yoga or like read recreation, you know, all those things I should be doing. I don't do any <laughs> of those things. But like, to me, like doing makeup, it's really relaxing. It's my version of a red wine, a glass of wine or reading a book. It's my therapy, I guess, in a way. It's my social like experience as well too, because you know, I get to meet a lot of the people as well. And it's a way I make a living. So it's like literally like everything to me all in one. And that's what I'd say is the best part about it. And as I've said many times, it's meeting people to it. And by say meeting people, I mean like all kinds of people. I mean, people who like love makeup. I meet people who never ever make up. Mm -hmm. I meet people who are intimidated by makeup. I meet people who are like, the more, the merry, the more you pile on. I meet people who are like three, four, five years old. I meet <laughs> 70, 80, 90 years old, right? Oh, but I mean, like, I meet all kinds of people. And like, even when I, when I, you know, when I work in retail or I do photo shoots, again, I meet all kinds of people. I do meet two, three, four year olds that are doing ballet dance commercials or a dance catalog. Or I do meet people who are 70, 80, 90 who are just learning how to redo their makeup again. So, I meet all kinds of people and from different cultures, from different backgrounds. So then I learn constantly their version of beauty because there is no definition of beauty, really. It's just this collective definition. So I get to learn a lot from other people, other styles, other cultures as well, too. So it's the learning part, too, that I love. Absolutely. And do you have a particular favorite style of hair and makeup artistry? I do. Um, like if I had a cho <laughs> if I had a choice, I would say like the bigger the hair, the bigger the makeup, <laughs> the louder the colors, the more extensions there are, like the more of everything, the better. Just because it's like more artistically creative, you have more to play with, you more have fun. Because I really don't believe that hair and makeup masks anybody. As much as you put on, I just think it reveals more of who they are. So I artistically, I like the more the merrier. But I have to say my style is really geared towards who I'm working with or for at the moment. Because I do love a very simplistic hair and simplistic makeup and clean look as well. I do love those things as well. It's just that the jobs I tend to take on or the jobs I tend to have are more about my creativity or about expression more. So it tends to be more colorful and a little bit jazzy. So I would say that is more my style. And if anybody has ever met me, it would definitely be lashes, like false lashes, whether it be short ones, long ones, fluffy ones, wispy ones, individuals. I'm a lash person, so that's me. Who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah, so which styles would you recommend for performing classical musicians? Good question. I would say when they're a classical musician, I would say it should be, their makeup should be reflective of the music that they're playing. So, I mean, I don't know music that well, but let's say if it's something, by my understanding, something classic, the makeup that you're creating should evoke moments or feelings of like elegance and radiance and peacefulness. And I would say those kind of emotions. I would say colors should be more neutral, like blacks, grays, browns, skin tone kind of colors to them or colors that are naturally in our skin tone, but more pronounced. Meaning red is a natural coloration in our skin that comes off as pink, but, but that is a color they can play off more of, which is like red. You know, I love the color purple and I love the color blue. It's just that those tend to not be as stage friendly because those are colors that are not naturally existing in our face or our, our, our skin or if they do they're more like discolorations like blue under eye circles right yeah. so i would say play up the neutral and natural tones but i would say most importantly is to play up textures have something shiny lighter and brighter in contrast with something that's a little bit darker and sharper okay 
Yeah. And would you say that plum is more of a redder color than a bluer color? Yeah. Plum definitely could work really nicely as well. You know, sometimes brown could, on some skin tones can look a little bit too muted or um, too much into the skin tone. So an alternative would be like plum or burgundy. Okay. Is, you know, you can use blue and purple, just, you know, darker versions of them perhaps, or if you do use it as that one color focus to it, I would say, yeah. Yeah, I remember you were telling me to um, use blue eyeshadow on mm -hmm. my eyeliner, so I thought that was a really cool tip. Can you explain yeah. more behind that theory? Yeah, I, like go, so going back a little bit then in what I said is, again, I did say do use like black and browns, let's say for around the eyes. But, you know, sometimes on a stage, those can actually look too dark around the eyes. Yeah. So an alternative could be to use like a dark blue or navy or like a dark purple and eggplant or a dark wine or like a berry kind of color. Those are actually nice because it's a little softer than black, but from far it would read, you know, the eyes looking darker and more defined. Yes. So I would say, yeah, those are great alternatives of doing it. But again, if you did want to do like a color pop of eyeshadow, just have that as the one main focus to it. Because again, it's just my opinion. It's like, when you're a classical musician, it's your music that is the center of attention and not necessarily your makeup, let's say. Um, but it doesn't mean don't have your personality. It's just that, you know, if you don't want it to, people to be seeing your green sparkly eyeshadow. You want them to be listening to your music, right? But at the same time, you still want to be seen. Yeah. So make sure you define the features. Absolutely. And yeah. I remember you were talking about the lips also using like a classic red type of. Mm -hmm. So going back again too, I would definitely say the colors to do would be like blacks, browns, grays, neutrals, and definitely a color, like a red on the lips, whether a classic red is like a blue undertone red, but you could go like a different kind of red, like a more scarlet orangey red, because red is such a, a classic timeless elegant, photograph friendly, camera friendly, from far away friendly type kind of a color. It makes the teeth look brighter too. So I feel like that's <laughs> a really nice color to be using on the lips for sure. Okay. And typically we would pair lips and cheeks together in the same family. However, if you're doing a red lip, I would recommend like blush, not like a red blush. I'd recommend it as like a pink or better to be a bronzer or a really highlighted or contour cheek just because red here and red here is very red yes. so use more bronze or highlight or contour and then third option would be like a pink blush maybe okay i think that's great tips yeah so can you explain the various ways in which performing artists especially classical music could explore stage makeup explore meaning go like do more than what they would normally do or more so like yes. trends? More than what they would, how about both? Trends and what they would normally do. Like when the times I have seen classical music play and the ones I've watched, it's their makeup was really, really simple. Meaning it was usually like a red-ish type kind of a lip and you know, minimal eye makeup here and there. What I think would be more like technique wise, more stage friendly and more trend wise is to really play up the highlights and the contours a little bit more i mean highlight and contouring is the oldest makeup technique which is a stage technique ever but i just it's it's not i don't see it often done strong enough with enough contrast to it so i would say do it with more contrast do something really like almost oily balmy with like a powder eyeshadow or highlighter that's a little bit sparkly or shimmery to really beam those cheeks and give radiance and then something darker and more sharp. Highline contours, is, you know, it has been a big trend in makeup for the last 10, 20 years. But I would say on stage, it would give you a really, really nice pop. I would say up the lip color factor a little bit more as well. And that I feel is just my own idea that like, with the global pandemic, people are wearing masks all the time. I feel yes. like people are so much happier if you just, when they wear a little bit brighter lipstick than they would normally do from before. Yes. So don't be shy to go a little bit more of a red or a richer red or a glossier red. Mm -hmm. And 
lashes. I just think lashes would, it's, you know, it's, I th- lashes are making a big comeback. You know, people are wearing them a lot more now. And it does, on a stage, really open up the eyes, like, a lot more as well. And you could actually, I mean, I would love to do the eyeshadow, eyeliner, and everything for everybody. But, you know, if someone doesn't do all those things or doesn't know how, a really good one or two coats of mascara and then just learn how to glue on those false lashes. It would open up the eyes beautifully and it would give it a really nice, like, stage look. So, absolutely. I never leave the house without my false eyelashes. Yeah, or, or you know, or when you're starting out like a half a set at least, but it's yeah. like on stage, it's like you're already on stage, you know, like don't be shy, just go like a little bit more. Absolutely. It, you know, it, it, it stands out in the right way. Yeah. For sure. And I think it sort of varies if you're doing orchestra, it's like you're generally going to blend in. But if you're doing solo or like a small ensemble where you have four people, two to four people, it definitely, um, you know, plays a factor of being more liberal with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, okay. Like, I definitely would say then if somebody is playing in an orchestra and they're playing a solo piece, whatever, is to really play up that red lip. But yeah, I mean, if you're playing in a big group and everything like that, then go a little bit more sub- subdued with the lip so that it, you know, blends in with everybody else in a way. Oh. But for sure, red would be like a really captivating color on the lips, definitely. Okay, thank you for the tip. And do you mind doing a demonstration for us? Sure. Like, I again, there's so many different looks out there, but I would definitely be happy to show you like a bold red lip of what I think would look good up close and on camera in a picture and how about a lash application just because that's that sounds great (laughs) absolutely sure I'll show you how okay awesome all right for a bold red lip I'm gonna recommend you first take your favorite lipstick lightly dab it onto the lips first Dab it onto lips, press it together, mush it together. What you're doing is you're imprinting a little bit of lipstick, creating like a really, really soft stain so that you can then see the maximum outer lip line that you have. Once you've done that, when you do actually apply your lip liner, your lipstick is, sorry, your liner is going to glide a lot more easily and you can find your lip line a lot easier as well too. I recommend to really first start in the very center of the lips since that's where we see the most amount of symmetry. So start in the cupid's bow, do a little X. And then perhaps right to the lower lip. Once you have that shape going, then you can go from side to center or center to side is really up to you. I just recommend to go slow and glide the pencil on and try to use the side of the pencil as opposed to the very, very tip of it. Once you have the outline, lightly just fill in the lip a little bit with the pencil so it has better longevity and also you don't get that lip line. Take your time to really perfect the edges and the lines of the lip. Once you're happy with the shape, then go ahead and reapply your lipstick. 
A matte texture is going to work better just because it will stay better, but if you have a cream or a satin one, it's okay too because you have the lip liner as the base. Two, three thin layers of lipstick is going to be a lot better than one big thick layer to it. Once you've applied that, again, just push the lips together so it merges it in together. Reapply if you need to. Once you're happy with the application the shape, if you need to, take a little bit of concealer, whether it be on a brush or an applicator. Just very carefully sharpen the lip line or the lip edges with it. Okay. Very carefully because if you do touch the lipstick, it will smudge it pink. You're really just doing this to emphasize the sharpness and the cleanness of the lip. Okay. If you'd like, go ahead and add a bit of gloss. I typically recommend just gloss in the center of the lips because it will always travel to the sides anyways. There you have it. All right, let's add some depth and dimension to the face by highlighting and contouring. So take something lighter, shinier, probably a little bit more of a liquid or cream or a balm texture so that creates that luminous effect. Place it on the high points of the cheek, whether you want to dab it on or sweep it on, that's really up to you. But on that high point, it creates that dewy effect to it. Further create that dimension by adding a powder highlight on top. Again, something lighter and a bit more shimmery and a little bit more shiny. And simply sweep that right on top. By layering it, it A will stabilize it, give it a bit more intensity as well too. So that when you turn and move, it catches the light. Step two, similarly to contour, take something a little bit darker and a little bit more matte. Again, something liquid, cream, or balm textured if you can. Start from the ear and the hairline along the bone, not under the bone. That actually hollows the face as opposed to shaping it. So go from the ear and the hairline and go along the bone or on the bone brush with nothing on it or your fingertips. You can just lightly blend upwards just to soften it or take the brush and lightly buff it. It's literally just going right under the highlight. Same thing, once that's finished, take a darker, more matte powder to it and layer it on top still starting from the ear and the hairline going here forward here forward okay if you go back and forth you'll create a stripe or a line which is not ideal you want it to be darker here and then lighter as you go towards the nose and the center of the cheeks if you need to go back in and add your highlight just to soften it back Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to apply your false lashes, I recommend you finish all of your eye makeup. So finish your eyeshadow, complete your eyeliner, and do a good coat of mascara so that your falsies have something to sit and hold on to. 
Once you applied your mascara, then take your pair of lashes, trim them from the ends if you need to, apply the glue on the lower band or the bottom part of the band. A thin layer is all you need. Too little, it's not going to stick, and too much, it's going to get a little bit goopy. So one thin line across the lower band. Once you've applied it, I like to take the two fingers and just give it a little roll so it has a natural bend to it. If you have, try to get one of these little swivel mirrors so that then you can just look down at the mirror and you can just lay it on top. It's very hard to look straight in the mirror and kind of fit them backwards. So if you don't have a folding mirror, then just lay the mirror flat on the table and look down. And when you look down, you can just easily see the concave of the eye. And you just lay it right on top. Okay, once it's laid down, use the back of a brush or just the very tip of your fingers just to give them a little nudge. There you have it. False lashes. Thank you so much, Vinny, for sharing that. That was absolutely awesome. And I will definitely take that to heart. So okay, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. It's always um, a challenge to put on eyelash. And it's great to see a professional, you know, demonstrate that. Well, thanks. It's not just for stage people, too. I mean, if somebody wants to wear a lash to go out on Friday, Saturday night, or just every day, go for it, too. Just maybe pick, like, a smaller pair or a shorter pair. But applying them is actually the same way anyways. Absolutely. I think I will definitely do that more often. So what is your beauty philosophy? My beauty philosophy is... Oh. I know that's everybody says, but like, it's to, it's to be yourself, really. It's like, use it to your advantage. That's the great thing about, I think, beauty is like, people have worn it like for ages and ages, and they're gonna continue to wear it for ages and ages. And really, it is to each his own. So like, don't be shy to explore and experiment with it, because makeup just really comes on and, and just comes off, you know? It does take time to learn and practice and develop your own unique style but really once you've tried a little bit of everything you figure out what works best for your features yeah. your like opportunities and creativity is like endless really really yeah, yeah. Be yourself and, my philosophy yeah that's a wonderful philosophy and I definitely love that philosophy because, I mean, who else are you going to be? <laughs> try, like, try different things, you know? Like, try this eyeshadow. Watch the videos that you like to watch. Follow what they like to do. It's perfectly fine to follow trends and do what others do. That's a way of figuring out what works best for you. Just don't be despaired by the fact that it doesn't look the same on you as it does on somebody else but try all the different products, techniques, and tips and tricks. And then if it works, keep those ones. And if it doesn't work, then, then don't do those ones. And you will get your own style after that. That's yeah. a good way of putting it. So what is it like to have multiple roles as an educator and a hair and makeup artist? Huh. Well, um, to, to me, like they go hand in hand. Um, I've always enjoyed the opportunities I've gotten, even prior to makeup, to uh, the education opportunities I've gotten. I've always been really appreciative of that. And I really value the opportunities of being able to go to the schools that I've gone to. And so when I started out, when I worked in makeup, it was to do the makeup, but I want to teach people how to do it as well, which eventually landed me into training role because I was teaching other people how to do makeup and to sell a product. So I always liked learning things myself and I like teaching it to other people as well and so I love being an instructor right now because it's sort of like I have to make sure like I'm really good at what I'm doing or I have to make sure I get this eyeliner perfect because I want to be the leading example for them Absolutely. at the same time I'm learning things from them all the time as well like as much as I'm teaching my students things all the time they're teaching me so many different 
things, meaning new product, new techniques, new trends, new social media ways, new verbiage. I'm learning so many things from my <laughs> students as well too. And I learn things from clients as well too, I, all kinds of people. But I'm just saying specifically students because they're the next generation of beauty or the, 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 yeah, the beauty art. So I like that I, I can do the makeup that I do, teach from experience, and then also while I'm teaching, learning as well too, which applies to my real life experiences with, uh, with clients as well too. So yeah. I just like that they go hand in hand. And then with hair, it was like, when I took the makeup program I took, you know, care was, was a compulsory course for it, which I was like, Ugh. but then <laughs> I was like, okay, well actually it's, you know, it's, you know, it's the the face, right? Like it's the hair is very much a part of the face as well too. So it's kind of like you get to be in charge of all of the the beauty in a way. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been so great because yeah, like if I didn't do hair, I would have I would miss out on so many opportunities. I mean, you're not as focused with just makeup, but then it's opened up to so many different opportunities for me to be able to do hair. And so, so much so that I even would say, not that I'm a stylist, but so much so that because I do a lot of my clients' hair and makeup, they often tend to ask me what about their outfits and things like that too, which I really have learned quickly too, that it's all like a whole, like everything comes together, nails, shoes, everything, it all comes together as well. So I have a lot of respect for other hair artists, wardrobe stylists, manicurists, accessory mm -hmm. people, because it really is all, all comes together. But you know, juggling hair, makeup, and teaching just makes it my job easier for me. Yeah. Uh, and is there one role that you prefer or are they sort of equally? It's definitely makeup. Okay. Just because <laughs> it's still my, it's the, the, the one I, I formerly went to school for. Mm -hmm. I would say it's the one that has the most well, in my opinion, has the most amount of creativity because like there's like a rainbow of colors and textures to choose from when it comes to makeup and combination of all those kind of things. There are lots of things you can do with hair as well, but I just, for me, because I studied makeup more, there's more I can do with makeup for me um, because I don't really cut or color people's hair. I just work with like hair pieces and styling of it all. So that's why you can do wonderful things with it. But just with makeup, I find it's, you can do a lot more with it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do you balance your many roles? It, right. It, you know, to be honest, it's been very easy in the last like eight years or so now, because I mainly work as an instructor and I work in luxury retail for Chanel. Okay. So really it's like the perfect balance between those two because it's like Monday to Friday, I'm teaching. And then on the weekends I do, I work for Chanel. Um, and then of course, sometimes in between here and there too. So that's really the two main balances I have. And with the commercial clients that I do have, they are typically very, they follow the seasons of the work. So I typically do shoots like January, February for the summertime and or I do them like August, September for the spring launches. So that's why it's like, I know which my commercial months are. And then of course, bridal tip, the brides I get typically are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it sounds like a lot, but for the most part, it's been an easy balance for me. There are definitely days or weeks or months where I'm working consecutively like seven D days in a row. Oh, but you wow. know, it's fine, right? Like that's my, that's my choice, right? Again, I love what I do. It's my exercise, it's my job, it's my social life. It really is like everything to me. So uh, for the last, honestly, many like eight something years, it's been pretty easy because I, it's, it's very easy to balance. When I started out though, because I was starting, I was taking like any job I could possibly get, whether it be a volunteer one, a low paying one or a higher paying one. It was like, whatever I could fill my days, I would fill it. Like, I remember doing like a bridal job at like five, six, seven in the morning and then doing a retail job from like 12 to eight and then doing like a nightclub job, doing people's makeup at a nightclub from nine to 11. Oh my God. So, I remember there's like things like that, but it was, it's fine. Like on it, I, when I think about it now, I don't think I do it anymore. 
Yeah. But at that time, I was like, it's fine. Like, I'm doing makeup on people. I'm getting to meet people. It, it was really fun, right? But it was definitely like a hustle. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Like. like every job, right? Like you <laughs> have to work hard. But that's what I said. Like, I the, the harder I work, the more it's gotten back to me. Mm-hmm. All those jobs I've ever done, big or small, it was like I made a connection. I learned something. It was like a valuable experience in it all. So... Yeah. yeah. So going back to beauty products, what are your top 10 go-to products? I know. I remember you're going to ask me this and it always, it constantly changes all the time to be very, very honest. Like, and it depends really what it's for and who it's for. But I did try to set up my background to kind of reflect a few of my top favorites that I've used for many, many years on myself and with clients. Okay. And so like, like, for example, cleansers, like I've always loved Shui Mira's oil cleansers just because I wear a lot of makeup or there's times where I work with, I wear a lot of makeup. You need an oil like to break down all the makeup and then something like to cleanse it after. So that's been one of my favorites. Um, Amora Pacific's Enzyme Face Wash is a really, really nice face wash as well to do just because it has that, I think it's rice, but I'm not really sure what it is, but there is like the enzyme powder in there that helps break down the makeup of like a gentle foam, which again, I've used that many, many times and I, lo- I love it. I'm not the biggest toner person just because if you properly cleanse the skin, you wouldn't need anything to really, really tone. I'm more of like a more moisturizing toner or like essence lotions, if anything. So I'd say like fresh rose toner, um, Kiehl's Calendula toner or SK2's Patera essence, or I like to use the masks on the people, the sheet mask on people, like those I find are better because it doesn't give you that like tingly feeling. It's more moisturizing feel. Yeah. Um, even before I worked first, no, I've always loved their skincare, particularly their serums. So, because I just feel like their serums have that perfect um, oil and water, water and oil like balance to it, whether it's more water based or oil based or brightening based. I just find it has a perfect consistency and textures to it that's not filmy. Absolutely. Um, but again, I really do think every brand has something amazing to offer. It's just, and I do like to use a lot of different things all the time too, like trial and error, but you know, there are things I continually go back for. Like I love having worked for Make Forever. I find they have amazing foundation products. Like before I loved their face and body foundation, which they don't have anymore. And then I started loving their, their, I think it's called water tone or I think that's their new one, but they have really nice water-based foundations, but try Test and True as the HD foundation, which it's fantastic for all you stage people out there because it's HD friendly, fluidy, but gives you the great coverage. Um, and they have great powders as well too. So I've always loved their makeup products in general, but their foundation products specifically, I've always been a fan of. Um, French powders, I think are amazing they you know french powders that are made in france they can mill them so light and so fine chanel has the fantastic loose powders without a doubt laura mercier makes really nice fine powders that are like so fluffy and light and milled they just feel like a cream actually because they're so silly (laughs) but it's a powder and um I've always been a fan of Max eyeshadows. I just, I mean, I, when I worked with them, it was like, I, I, even to this day, I, whenever I walk by, I still think like they have the best eye, eyeshadow selection in terms of color range, texture range. Like, I think they have like six or eight different textures to them now from like matte to very matte or retro matte, I think they called it. Frost to like iridescent to shimmer to pearl, the luxe pearl. They have like amazing textures to them. And so the color payoff, I think, is amazing as well. But again, depends where you're using it for, right? Like some of their eyeshadows are a lot stronger than you would want it to be. <laughs> Whereas other brands, they make eyeshadows are meant to be very light and soft because it's like they're easier to use, right? Yeah. But I would say MAC eyeshadows are some of my, have always been my favorites for a very long time, along with their powder blushes as well. And because their packaging is more um, friendly and artist friendly in that you can, you don't have to buy things in pre-made compacts or palettes you can individually do them 
Okay. So I always liked those ones. Um, and Stila's liquid lipsticks have always been one of my favorites, favorites, favorites ever. Yeah. Um, the Stay All Day liquid lipsticks, oh. particularly the fiery, fiery red. It's like the best red in my opinion for a lipstick. Um, yeah. Those are, I don't know, how many was that? Is that more than 10? That was, that was a lot. <laughs> I think there's more than Again, 10. To be but... honest, it really, really depends. Like it, it would be so much easier if you were like, what are your top 10 foundations? I could probably list like just the 10. Or if you said like <laughs> top 10 lipsticks, I can list you like my top 10. But to say like the whole thing, it's really hard to pinpoint, honestly, like just top 10 I mean I can really really try but again it just really depends on the person in the situation really absolutely yeah. yeah thank you for sharing that it's pretty cool that you you know have different favorites and it, it ranges I from do brands. I do I think I, that's the thing is I love the brands I work for the brand I work for but there are so many I like brands have been around because everybody has something amazing to offer. Some brands are, you know, are under like an umbrella company. So, you know, their brand or their product is very similar to the formula of their brother or sister companies. But again, there's still a lot of different companies out there or different brands out there. And just everybody has something unique to offer. So yeah, try, try all the different ones and then see what it's like. Find the one that works for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of teaching, Based on both experiences as a student teacher, how should one approach teaching and educating students? To teach from experience, first and foremost. So, and again, experience could mean like doing it for one day or one month or one year. By experience, I mean that you're you've done it enough times to confidently be able to do it properly so that you can then teach someone how to do it and it comes off more genuine because it is genuine from your own experiences like i try to teach everybody the techniques you know techniques the makeup techniques there's like a handful of them you know blending is blending lining is lining symmetry is symmetry those are very basic techniques really absolutely you know? But the idea is how you deliver the technique, how you tell the story of the technique. That all comes with the experience of it all. So that's what I would say is to, at, you know, as much as possible to teach from experience. You know, like I do a lot of bridal. So when I teach people bridal, I can teach them like all the different techniques and all the different looks. But it's really when you're when I'm teaching them a bridal look, it's I'm sharing them my experiences of when I did this look, we wanted it changed this way. Or when I did this color, I had to change it this way. Or when we did this trial, it was not the way it was on the actual wedding day, we ended up changing it. So the idea is to teach from experience as much as possible so they can tell you what it's what it's like as if they were there with you. Um, and then as I said earlier too, is to never stop learning, really. Like the things I've learned, I've learned, it's great. I practice it all the time. But again, I learn new things all the time. Like, I can't think of something <laughs> right now, but I learn things like all the time from my students. Like just, because makeup is such a so social interactive job as well too. It's very technical, but yeah. it's such a social interactive job as well too. And I would say from my students and from my weddings that I've done, what I learn all the time is the cultural, definitions or interpretations of beauty that I'm learning and the the merging of their traditional ways of doing makeup with the more adaptive ways of doing makeup as well too I wouldn't even say makeup of beauty of beauty because there's like the hair the jewelry the clothes you know I'm learning so many ways of talking about makeup that mm. are different on a wedding day for certain cultures of course, certain colors mean different things for different people. So it's kind of the same thing when I when I do makeup for my clients as well too. Is like I could I have a look in mind, but then depending on what they're wearing, um, where they're going, um, what the personality is like, my makeup always idea always changes as well too. Just because it's not I don't like to create like a look. Mm -hmm. I like to make it like an outfit or something like 
that goes with the rest of them. I don't have to find the right word for it, but you know, I don't like to just have this pre-designed look for them. Yes. I just like to make it part of everything else that's happening with them. So would you say it's customizing to a client specifically based on their own style and personality? Yeah, for sure. Because again, I meet clients that I know or I meet clients I don't know all the time and they will tell me an idea or I may present an idea, but I still always change a little bit because it's like, you know, people show me pictures of what they want and I'm like, I have to think like, do you want it exactly that way? <laughs> do you have that personality where you are comfortable to make it your own? And I always try to make people have like own their own looks as much as possible. I love inspiration in pictures and things like that, yeah. but I don't like to replicate or duplicate them. I like to make it more of themselves too. And literally 100% of the time, they appreciate that more just because we are who we are, right? So that just even goes back to your question about philosophy is like, just be who you are. Absolutely. Like, the thing about makeup is like, be who you are. Use it to bring out something else. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And I was wondering, where do you get your inspiration, especially as an artist? Well, you mean like to do inspiration as in like if I were to do my own creative photo shoot or like inspiration like um, if I like if I were to create a look for someone I just meet? Um, let's say both. Let's use All right. both. Well, when I, okay, so how about this? When I started, I was like looking at all the different books that there were out there. I was like doing a lot of research with like books, magazines, and the internet, <laughs> like for actual makeup pictures as my inspiration when I was starting out. And then from there, the, I would say the time that I felt most inspired when I was like pre designing like the face chart looks and just practicing looks on like pieces of paper for fun, it was from Insect. <laughs> and bird books just because with those books it wasn't like a literal makeup look it was just like colors and textures and there are some really beautiful insects that have amazing colors and textures which i just thought it was really cool how those colors naturally overlay and intertwine and then similarly butterflies and birds as well because their feathers and their colors so it was those particular books that I felt really inspired by when I was starting out to make really colorful looks but then my style has really really changed a lot because when I was starting out it was like I'm a makeup artist like here's <laughs> the makeup here's the color like it was like everything I could possibly push I did yeah. but my makeup has evolved mm -hmm. so now really I mean, those are already in the back of my mind because they're already in the back of my mind. But now, really, the inspiration I get is from, like, living life itself. Like, it is just from not even purposely going to a flower garden or flower mart or purposely going to, like, a particular scene or whatever. It's just living life as it is and then taking those moments in. Like, you know walking on the, my front door steps like the rain that goes on the gravel has this like grayish shiny muddy vibe to it it's like oh those are nice eyeshadow colors or <laughs> yeah or you know when you are on vacation and you see like that beautiful yellow red orange sunset oh those are great like eyeshadow colors so there are literal translations to it and there's more like metaphorical but my, again, my, my makeup has changed in that I don't like it to, I like to use as much makeup as possible to bring out the person. So the inspiration I get really now is from like the person. So it can go in any way. Like if I meet someone and they seem more on the shy side, it's kind of like I try to talk them into trying a <laughs> bright color or multiple bright colors just to like, compensate their shyer side by giving them more lively color and i always do the makeup with somebody with or and, and do and do your own makeup i always encourage people to do makeup with the mirror in front of them or makeup artists do make makeup with mirror in front of their clients so that they can live the experience with you you know it's really that's why i love about makeup is like when you use a certain color you can see people or a certain color makeup or whatever people's personality, body language becomes more confident and you can literally see people like becoming a part of the makeup. So it's like, 
yeah, like purple is my favorite color. I'll put a purple eyeshadow on them. You can see them like sitting more upright and like more confident. And it's like, yeah, that is bringing out more of a confident side to you. And then if they're like slouching and like looking away, then it's, you know, you change it. It's not the color for them, right? Yeah. But I'm saying it's like my inspiration really comes from the person's stories, the person's outfit or what they're wearing, of course, but it's just getting to know them and then coming up with a look from there. And to be honest, really, I, I like I, a reason why I love makeup too is because I actually love the actual products itself. Like, it's, you know, like you think how many more lipstick colors could there possibly be? And how many styles of eyelashes could there be? It's, but the thing is there is endless possibilities. So when I see a new eyeshadow palette, it's like, oh my gosh, I know I can create those colors. I know I can mix and match and make them, but the assembly and the packaging and packaging it of like that just makes me want to use it. And so I would say the products itself is quite inspiring to me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, well, it definitely seems that way, especially when I look at your shelf. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing is like they're, well, yeah, just like a few makeup pieces in here and there. But like, you know, when you look at eyeshadow palettes, they're already assembled. Like the colors sometimes are already picked out. Like I love to customize, but when they're picked out already, there's something really inspiring about it. And that in itself, I get inspiration from. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Can you tell me more about the recent projects you were involved in and any upcoming projects planned for this year? Upcoming projects, again, it makes it sound so boring, but really I mainly just like teach Monday to Friday and I do the, the events, the virtual or in-store events for Chanel. So that's mainly all I've been working on. Yeah. I mean, with the COVID thing, it's been rather exciting in that like, <laughs> my job used to be like entirely done in person mm -hmm. and so the project i have been working on the last year and a half was converting my teaching experiences and my in-person makeup experiences to all virtually teaching people and virtually instructing people so like i'm glad i was able to do that because then it made me more prepared for something like this but mm -hmm. i would say that was, was the main thing I've been working on the most is just converting in-person makeup style and beauty style to a more virtual experience. And in the future, it's probably to merge the two together, Absolutely. I would say. Um, I mean, I would love to still get back into doing shoots for creatives and competitions and things like that too. But again, um, I like to respect the guidelines that they follow and with my jobs I'm quite occupied working from home doing all of this but yeah. Oh that's amazing. It's not that exciting. Well no but still I mean you took your brand and you made it into something that's accessible internationally and globally so that's that in itself is really hard to do especially if you're locally based yeah. yeah. Well, I thought of all those things, like I always, like when I first started, I always wanted to write a book about makeup, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, I've written or updated this, my school's manual so many different times, but I'm like, that is kind of like my book too. And I am going to probably do it and I probably should. Maybe that's going to be my, my next big goal <laughs> is to actually finish my book that I said I was going to start writing 10 years ago. I definitely like put it aside for a very long time because I was like, nobody's reading books anymore anyway. But the thing is, I was like, I was never writing it for anybody else anyways. It was just for me to get my thoughts out. So that's still going to be on my list of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's amazing. I'm going to look for your book now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. It's, totally it's probably going to be something more like when I retire, to be more like a memoir book as opposed to an instructional how-to book now. <laughs> well, that's the thing too. I, I wanted to do it because when I started makeup, there wasn't really like YouTube videos and stuff like that. It was just literally learning makeup from in person. So I wanted to write a book about it. And then when I was starting to write it, YouTube videos were becoming so, 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 so popular. And they still are. That I was like thinking even to myself, I'm like, yeah, why would somebody read a book about makeup? Because it's so, it's so literal. 
sorry, it's so like word. It's just words. It's so much better to watch a video of somebody doing makeup or talking about it. But it's just that was never really my forte is being in a video. But I'm really happy to do it now because yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's for the world. <laughs> or for the world, yeah. Yeah. It's like a different experience. So absolutely. You know, one day. But I think books are really great. I mean, I used to actually go to the library and look for makeup books because personally, right, as as a musician, a classic musician, you don't always get to know what looks suit you. And you go by the makeup counter once in a blue moon to get, you know, your makeup done and see what colors to play with. But it's it was usually on trend rather than talking yeah. about the classical look. So I really appreciate this. And I think all your thoughts have been really insightful. And yeah, and speaking of thoughts, with the way of the world today, how can we bring in cultural diversity and openness to society, especially during these times? Mm. You see, the thing is like, I was born and raised in Toronto by like, like my like the the upbringing i was around was like very multicultural mm -hmm. so like that for me already was like the easy part to it and the thing is when i when i started working in makeup like there was something for everybody already anyways mm -hmm. or when i first started the brand i worked for was mac and they like had everything to offer everybody already anyways like that literally is I should remember this, but it was like the mission statement, which was like all ages, all races, all sexes, mm -hmm. all genders. Can't remember the exact phrase, but you know, they, they had something for everybody already anyways. And working there, I worked with alongside and I had clients of all ages, all races, all genders, all defi different definitions of beauty. So that for me was already a great experience to start. And, then, and I would say keep that going as well. And then from there, I went to Makeup Forever, which was very similar in that aspect as well too. I would say uh, what's great is that more people are into beauty, meaning like, you know, as makeup artists, I mean all kinds, like make, fellow makeup artists or are, are, are hairstyles, I mean, we're like from everywhere around the world, but I'm saying the clients I mean now are more, are, are broader because the beauty industry has grown so much now that like everybody wants to start wearing more makeup now than they did before so i wouldn't say there's really anything to really really change it's like a natural evolution to it though right like before still you know it was always makeup or beauty or skincare stores were always geared towards either like the 20 or 30 or like anti-aging which is like 60 70 but now really there's a range for like every brand has a range for everybody and everyone now as well too or you get very focused ones as well mm -hmm. so how to introduce more of it i would say keep going to your makeup and beauty counters really and, and wear the makeup enjoy the makeup as well that's what i would say is the only real change to encourage absolutely that's good advice. <laughs> so I was wondering, you have accomplished so much, um, especially, you know, being you and all the experiences you had. What would you say are your proudest accomplishments? My proudest accomplishments would be, well, for one of them is the ability of being able to like, change people's lives or their outlook or their confidence some in small ways and some in very very big ways with a simple tube of lipstick or eyeshadow or mascara i would say is that is my continual proudest accomplishment is that um, moment of helping that person discover something more about themselves mainly like their confidence by that, I mean, like, you know, a little girl's makeup that I was doing beside her mom. I added a little mascara and a lipstick for her. Yeah. It's something like that, where I could just see in that little girl, she was so happy to be involved in that process of her mom getting ready as well, too. You know, something like that. 
or it is doing a bride's makeup on the wedding day where she gets to really see herself envisioned as that blushing bride she always thought of herself to be on that magical day to be able to deliver that to them mm-hmm. it's being able to show people how to draw their eyebrows back because i've worked with cancer <laughs> patients as well too right so yeah. it's it's it, it you know it can be making that model look as glamorous as she wants to be being able to do that for them making that bride look glowing but then it could be something else that teaching someone how to draw their eyebrows back because of cancer or whatever else is going on in their life is being able to do things like that and really whether it's this or that it's the same confidence that you gain back you get to see more of yourself back again so that i would say is my continual proudest accomplishment is being able to use this simple piece of makeup infusing it into that the skill into it for that person to have the confidence i would say that is my top 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 but if you see something more tangible i'm going to say it's my very first award with the aba just because when i was starting out i was competing live and i oh sorry i did enter one one time before and i was like oh let me just enter like for fun <laughs> and i did not place like anywhere near and i realized why cuz i was like Oh, I didn't take this seriously enough. Like I should have planned my look. I should have planned the hair. I should have planned the outfit even though it's just about the makeup. So that's why I learned it's is about the makeup, but it's still everything else too. So anyways, so when I went back and entered again, I I won. That was my proudest accomplishment because it was it was not so much because I won, but it was more so because it was like, "Oh my god, I learned how to do it seriously and more properly." Like, you know, yeah, so that was my proudest accomplishment there mm-hmm. and then a year after it was being asked by the company Messi to to Sodor to represent Canada for their international makeup championships so that was really really fun because i got to meet really like really amazing artists from around the world and i got to work or compete alongside them and it was my first like international job so i would say those are my proudest accomplishments thus far Um but to be honest when I before the brands that I worked with like every job that came along was like every new day or new job that I got was like a proud accomplishment cuz like oh my god I got another client oh my god I got another job oh my god I'm going to pay my bill yeah. so it was like every day was like a happy accomplishment at the time which it still is but you know work is a lot steadier now so that's great but I'm just saying at the time it was like every new client I got I just felt like it was a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Still feel that way now, but you know, it's like a different feeling now. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing and for your time, Vinny. It was an absolute pleasure to have you here and uh thank you for you know, sharing your thoughts and talents with us today. Well, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you really. <laughs> It's just I've never done anything like this before ever, but I'm just happy to support your channel and hopefully educate some of your stage friends as well too. Absolutely. And for our viewers, thank you for tuning in. Your support and time means everything. For questions or comments, please feel free to leave a message or contact Vinny through his website, which will be in the description box. Also, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for future episodes. In the meantime, please be well, stay safe, and keep showing up and supporting brilliant artists like Vinny. Until next time, see you. Bye.